Welcome to GMAT Math Online Math Prep Videos. In this GMAT Math Online video, we continue our discussion of how to solve fraction problems. We start with abstract problems. Problems that use variables instead of specific values can be more challenging because they're more abstract. Nevertheless, these are important problems, and learning to solve them is a valuable skill to develop. Here's a sample problem. BCD Company made K dollars in sales last month. If Nedra's group accounted for $8,000 in sales and Collins' group for Y dollars, what fraction did their two groups together account for? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. When the problem asks what fraction, it means what fraction of the K dollars in sales BCD made. Therefore, K is the denominator of the fraction. Nedra's group made 8,000, and Collins made Y. So the numerator is 8,000 plus Y. That is, the fraction of BCD's sales accounted for by these two groups is 8,000 plus Y over K. So the correct answer is E. Now let's look at a problem involving sums and differences in a series. Suppose we have a series of fractions connected by plus and minus signs. Then in order to determine what their sum or difference comes to, we need to find a common denominator for the different fractions. Here's a typical example. One-half plus one-third plus one-fourth minus one-sixth minus one-eighth minus one-twelfth equals. And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution we need a common denominator for these fractions. The denominators of the first four, 2, 3, 4, and 6, all divide evenly into 12. The denominator 8, however, does not. Nevertheless, 8 goes into 24 evenly, as do all the others. So 24 is the least common denominator of these fractions. Therefore, if we transform them, we can add and subtract as needed. One-half plus one-third plus one-fourth minus one-sixth minus one-eighth minus one-twelfth equals twelve twenty-fourths plus eight twenty-fourths plus six twenty-fourths minus four twenty-fourths minus three twenty-fourths minus two twenty-fourths and that equals seventeen twenty-fourths. So the correct answer is C. Next, we look at a problem based on the products and quotients of fractions, product series. When fractions are multiplied and divided, the factors in the numerators and denominators often cancel each other, allowing us to simplify the fractions. When the resulting fractions are then added and subtracted in a series, we may or may not need to find common denominators, depending on the results of the multiplications and divisions. Here's a sample problem. One-half divided by two-thirds minus two-thirds times one-half minus one-fourth divided by three-fifths equals what? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. One-half divided by two-thirds minus two-thirds times one-half minus one-fourth divided by three-fifths equals one-half times three-halves minus two-thirds times one-half minus one-fourth times five-thirds, which equals three-fourths minus one-third minus five-twelfths. And that equals nine-twelfths minus four-twelfths minus five-twelfths, which equals zero. So the correct answer is A. Now let's look at a problem involving fraction size. Because it is difficult to determine the comparative sizes of fractions having different denominators, we need to approach these problems more carefully. Specifically, it is easiest to compare fractions if they have the same denominator. So we need to find a common denominator. Or we can note that if two fractions have the same numerator, then the smaller fraction has the larger denominator. Here's a sample problem. 
if x equals 7 eighths minus 6 sevenths, then which of these inequalities is true? And here are some possible answers. Let's find the solution. This problem is straightforward if we do what we're first inclined to do. That is, perform the subtraction and see what we get. Their common denominator is 8 times 7, which equals 56. So, x equals 7 eighths minus 6 sevenths. Therefore, x equals 49 56 minus 48 56, which is equal to 1 56. Now we have to read the inequalities properly. Note that a larger integer in the denominator makes a smaller fraction. That is, if y is less than z, then 1 over y is greater than 1 over z. Example, 3 is less than 4, but 1 third is greater than 1 fourth. So, into which of these inequalities does x equal 1 56th fit? A x is greater than or equal to 1 30th and less than or equal to 2 23rds. x does not fit here because 1 56th is less than 1 30th. b. We'll skip b for now and come back to it later. c. x is greater than or equal to 1 90th and less than or equal to 1 60th. x does not fit here because 1 56th is greater than both 1 90th and 1 60th. D. X is greater than or equal to 1 90th and less than or equal to 2 over 113. X does not fit here because 1 56th equals 2 over 112, which is greater than 2 over 113. E. X is greater than or equal to 2 over 125 and less than or equal to 1 60th. X does not fit here because 1 56th is greater than 1 60th. Now let's go back to B. B. X is greater than or equal to 1 60th and less than or equal to 1 30th. X does fit here because 1 56th is greater than 1 60th but less than 1 30th. So the correct answer is B. For more on fraction problems, see our other videos and go to www.gmatmath.online. And you can get our ebooks, GMAT Math Basics, GMAT Math Problem Solving, and GMAT Math Data Sufficiency. Thanks for your interest.